Hey everyone, we're here in New York on the USS Intrepid and this is F-14 prototype number seven. This was the engine test bed for the F-14 program and this is the only F-14 to carry all four engines that were tested. So if you want to start to walk this way, Jane, <laughs> is it good? So this aircraft in 1981, they fitted it with the F-401 engine uh, and that didn't work out so well. And then later on in 1984, they fitted it with the General Electric F-110 engine which had way more thrust and it was a super successful variant and that's what became the F-14A plus and the F-14D engine. This is actually the very first F-14 I ever saw in real life. I came here in 2002 and I walked over there and I'll cut to a clip of that now. As I was walking around just there, um, I started to catch a glimpse of the tails. Um, so I'm guessing that it's behind me now. So when I turn around, I'm going to see it for the first time. So. I'm going to film my expression when I see this aeroplane that I've loved for so many years for the first time. So um, here goes. I promise I haven't already looked. Da -da -da. But uh, you'll, you'll see my face uh, in 2002 when I very first saw this aircraft. And this aircraft was, was made in 1973, so it's, that's when I was born. So it's exactly the same age as I am. So 2025 minus 1973 carry the one makes us both 52 years old. And I think she looks a lot better than I do at this age. And this paint scheme is pretty cool. It's, uh, I guess, from the 80s, but uh, I really like it. And I've got a model at home of this one, so it's, it's got a very special place in my heart. And then we see all the classic weapons. There's a AIM-9 Sidewinder, AIM-7 Sparrow, and the AIM-54 Phoenix Missile. And uh, if we come and look at the tail here, How neat is that Super Tomcat? And I don't know if you want to zoom in on the Bureau of Aeronautics number, that is 157986 Tomcat number 7 off the production line. The only other interesting thing you might like is behind you there. This is the Lockheed A12. It's a variant of the SR-71. So we can go for a quick walk up the front of this as well. So the difference between this and the SR-71 is that I believe this was a CIA, CIA, <laughs> Central Intelligence Agency, CIA spy plane, and it only has one crew position. So you can see there, there's only room for a pilot. Uh, whereas the SR-71 has like a navigator, I think camera operator that sits in the back. So apparently this thing was a real rocket ship. I've heard it described that the SR-71, if that was your family sedan, this thing was a Mustang. So there you go, it. Lockheed A-12, and, and just over there, there's an Israeli Kefir. And I believe we had a few of those uh, in America, how they were used for uh, aggressor training. All right, so the rest of this video, we'll just make a, um, a detailed close-up walk around, and I'll let Jane get down in the warm in the cafe, and I'll hang out here on this uh, windy, rainy New York day. And this paint scheme, this a lot of museum aircraft you see uh, redone, but this looks to be original. I don't think this has been redone or touched up. And you can see the engines there, they're the tail pipes of the Pratt & Whitney TF-30s. So obviously they're not the uh, GE F110 engines that the F14A plus and the D have. This looks really neat. I'm not sure if my model has those stars with that stripe there. I'll have to have a look. Maybe I'll include that in this video. Uh, so there, there are the stars that I wasn't sure about, so they are there. Um, but I noticed that the GE logo uh, that was on the real aircraft isn't on this one. So moving up and then that red stripe, I didn't mention that on any of the videos, but that red stripe, I guess, is a turbine warning stripe. Amazing. And this is a good bit of deets. Uh, you don't often see a sparrow on the pylon here, so uh, you can see the distance there. <laughs> Whenever I put these on, I was never sure exactly where to locate that missile. And as you can see, there's a bit of a gap there between the pylon and the, uh, the tail fin of the AIM-7. Moving along, there's the sidewinder. And then this was the only F-14 paint scheme I've seen to, that had the uh, insignia, the US insignia roundel back there on the fuse, or back there on the uh, side of the engine nacelle. And there's the glove vein. 
It looks like it's an operational one. It was probably never deactivated as this was an early prototype F-14. That says at a AM-54A Phoenix. I must admit I don't know a lot about the different variants of the Phoenix missile. And then there's those big pallets. I, I think we, we talked about it earlier videos, but that's a obviously an AIM-54 pallet on the front there. All right, we'll move up a little bit. There's a better view of the insignia there. Yeah, I really like this paint scheme. It's really cool. And there's the Grumman logo on the uh, refueling probe door. And you can see that the, the, the end of the radome there is the, um, it's like a rounded tip, but I believe this aircraft actually had a quite a long test probe boom on the nose originally. And that side-by-side -side Erst TCS sort of setup looks like what the F-14D had. Beautiful aircraft. And just as a note, this is the model I mentioned in the video of the Super Tomcat that I have. It's the uh, Caliber Wings Super Tomcat. Um, comes in this really nice box with this excellent photo. You could probably frame that. It's pretty neat. And as you can see, the Super Tomcat did have that boom on the nose, which does come in this kit. Um, I haven't stuck it in because I want to get it in nice and not break it. So this is the model here. Um, before I move it around too much, the wings do articulate a little bit. Doesn't look like they go to full out. Oh, you can force it. Yep, okay. So that works. Uh, and the paint scheme looks pretty accurate. I've got to have a bit of a look though, because uh, so there, there are the stars that I wasn't sure about, so they are there. Um, but I noticed that the GE logo uh, that was on the real aircraft isn't on this one. So I don't know if that was added at a different point. And um, the shape on the wingtips See, it's like a straight line. I'm pretty sure I've seen photos where that was a curve. Uh, so I'll have a bit of more of a look, but um, yeah, but I really like it. It's, I wanted to build one of these because I had to have ones that I've built, but um, yeah, it's much easier just to go and buy one uh, if you're collecting your favorite Tomcat schemes. Uh, and I made this uh, stand for it because the one that Sentry, sorry, Caliber Wings, uh, I don't know why I get those mixed up, but the ones that Caliber Wings make is this weird three prong design and it doesn't work very good. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend buying that. I just make your own and I just screwed a screw into the bottom of it. I drilled a hole and tapped a thread. Uh, so yeah, that works really good. And you can see there's slots there to put pylons on. So the kit comes with uh, these all sorts of accessories. So you got the test bombs, uh, some side winders and fuel tanks. And then you get an option to display the, um, the GEF 110 nozzles in a closed position focus uh, but I prefer them when they're uh, open they look a bit cooler to me and uh, and then yeah then you get you can put the landing gear down if you want and I believe that has an option to have the canopy open and then there's the uh, the probe for the nose which I haven't installed yet when it focuses so yeah that'd be pretty neat so yeah, I just thought I'd give you a little tour of that. And I believe these are a limited edition, so I don't know how available they are, but that is, this one's number 509 out of a thousand. So you get this little card. It feels plasticky. It's just got a metal coating on it. But uh, I don't plan on selling it or anything. I'm just gonna enjoy it. So that's, that's that, the Caliber Wings Super Tomcat.